Thank you very much for listening to my talk. I'm Yunlin Hao, and I'd like to talk about links between division property and other cube attack variants. This is a joint work with Lin Zhao, Chao Yin Li, William Mer, Yosuke Toto, and Qin Ju Wang. About the motivation of this work, we start with the latest story in the realm of cube attacks. It's about Fuitan's cube attack results on Trivium proposed at Crypto 2018. They provide a theoretic 855 round result along with a 721 round practical verification. On the cube submissions in the practical attack, they claimed that for wrong guesses, the result is one with probability 50%. Soon afterwards, how it will give a thorough analysis to Fu's result in ePrint. They provide theoretic evidence that the 855 round result result is questionable and the practical one is completely self-contradicting. They find that the cube submissions in the practical attack are constantly zero for both correct and incorrect key guesses. How's finding force fool to admit their mistakes? In ePrint, they admit that they forget to test the 32-dimensional cubes on the wrong key guessing. They provide 29-dimensional new cubes as a remedy to the 721-round result. However, Fu et al. have no response to the theoretic result, so the questionable comment remains. Finally, at EuroCrypt 2020, the conclusion on Fu's results and remedy is finally joined by Hao et al. using a three-subset division property technique. They prove that the 855 round result doesn't work, and the remedy is wrong as well. Instead of blaming Fu and appealing for an honest research, we should learn a more important lesson. A theoretically reliable key recovery result should include two proofs. Firstly, there is detectable non-randomness when the key guess is correct. Secondly, randomness is verified when the key guess is wrong. Taking proof 2 for granted can cause catastrophic consequences, but the cruel fact is that some practical attacks due to the lack of computational resources simply assume proof 2 to be true without any verification. At issue script 2011, Diner et al. proposed the first dynamic cube attack on full grain 128. It is a practical attack implemented on a FPGA cluster. They use 51 specific cubes to detect, to detect the non-randomness named the bias phenomenon, which means over 50 cube submissions are zero. They expect that there is bias phenomenon detected for the correct key guess, and for wrong guesses, the cube submissions are random zero or ones. But according to their experiments, the bias phenomenon can only be detected for 8 out of 107 randomly chosen keys. Furthermore, the randomness of the wrong key guess has never been tested. Therefore, it is unknown whether proof 2 is true or whether Dinner's attack is available. Even if two, proof 2 were to be true, the success probability of Dinner's attack should still be 7.5%, which is quite low. Faced with the situation, our initial goal is to give a theoretically more reliable dynamic cube attack on Grand 128 with higher success probabilities. To be more specific, our new dynamic cube attack guarantees all 29 cube submissions to be constant zero when the key guess is correct. For wrong key guesses, we only ask that not all cube submissions are zero. Under certain assumptions, we show that proof 2 is, two, is true with probability about 99.83%. The theoretic tool we use is the division property, a powerful tool for deducing theoretically available cube attacks. We now introduce the concepts used in this paper. In the context of cube attacks, a string cipher starts from an initial state SO containing secret key bits X and the public IV bits V. Then, the updating function is called iteratively for R rounds to generate a state SR where a key and IV bits are thoroughly mixed. Finally, an output bit is generated SZ. 
the algebraic normal form a and f of z can be represented as a complicated polynomial of k and iv variables as follows. The coefficient a u to the f is a binary polynomial of k bits corresponding to the iv monomial k to the u, v to the u. In Cubitec, a cube index set i is predefined. Set i uniquely determines an iv monomial v to the ki. The output bit is uniquely decomposed as z equals to v to the ki times pi plus qi, where pi is called the superpoly. For such set i and the binary vector iv, a specific structure named cube is defined as ci containing two to the i vector v's. Dinner and Shamir have proved that the value of the superpoly can be computed by summing the output z's corresponding to all the vector v's in the cube. If the superpoly is secret key related with the simple ANF, we can recover the ANF offline and get the exact value pi online with the cube summation. In this way, one bit of key related information is recovered directly. The dynamic cube attack is based on the following observation. For the particular intermediate state bit Sij becomes a constant zero, the ANF of the output bit Z will change significantly. With such an ANF change may be reflected by a particular non-random property called the bias phenomenon. For randomly chosen key X, the value of the superpoly Pi is more likely to be zero rather than one indicating that the y in the, in the equation is larger than zero. The nullification of the crucial bit Sij is achieved by setting an IV bit VL, referred as the dynamic IV, to a particular value, a function FL determined by the ANF of Sij. Therefore, during the cube summation, three kinds of IV bits are to be assigned in different manners. The cube IVs are still traversing all possible values. The constant IVs remain constants. The dynamic IV are set afterwards according to the AN of FL. Of course, the FL involves key bits, so the whole process of the dynamic cube attack can also be divided into offline and online phases. In the offline phase, the, the adversary should find many qualified cubes having significant bias when SIJ is successfully nullified. What we refer as significant bias means the y in the equation is large. With these cubes, in the online phase, we need to guess the k bits involved in the ANF of the dynamic value and compute the cube summations for each key guess to acquire the bias, indicating that the number of zeros in the n cube summations. The key guess corresponding to the most significant bias is most likely to be the correct one. The cubes used in dynamic cube attacks should be qualified with the two proofs of theoretically reliable key recovery attacks. More specifically, for the correct key guess, there is large bias y0 for the, for the wrong guess, the bias y1 should be proved small. The largest possible y0 is 2 to the minus 1, when the superpoly pi is constant 0. The smallest y1 should be also be proved. If y1 equals to 0, the cube summation is random. Let's get down to the essence of the bias phenomenon. According to its definition, the bias phenomenon reflects the proportion of keys that make the superpoly being 0. The number of zero sum keys is larger than that of one sum keys by y. Dinner's dynamic cube attack practically verified a positive y0 in proof 1, but for proof, proof 2, they simply assume y1 equals to 0. In our dynamic cube attack, we are able to theoretically prove the largest possible y0 in proof 1. In proof 2, we are able to find a deterministic weak key class W such that the superpolar value corresponding to the weak keys are all 0. Our assumption is that the non-weak keys have random superpoly values, so the bias y1 can be computed directly with the key space size. In other words, our attack moves a tiny step forward than Dinner's in proof 2. 
inner intents direct, directly assume the super poly values are random for all keys, while we assume randomness for the non weak keys. The theoretic tool we use is the division property. It was proposed at Eurogroup 2015 and was originally used for finding integral characteristics for block ciphers. With the division property, the traditional integral property of a multiset is represented as a set of binary vectors denoted as k. When the multiset is encrypted through iteratively up iterative updating function calls, the corresponding division property set k change accordingly to track the integral property propagation. With the updating function calls, the multiset transforms from XO to XR, and the division property also propagates from KO to KR. The K vectors in KO to KR form a chain referred as a division trail. If there is no division trail KO to EJ, we know, we know that J ciphertext bit has zero sum property. The suitability of a division trial is evaluated with the MILP model constructing and solving process. For a division trial KO to KR, each of their entries are regarded as binary variables of an MILP model M. The updating function is described as a set of linear constraints. The final vector KR is intentionally set to EJ in order to evaluate the zero sum property of the J bit. Then, the model M is solved with an MILP model, uh, model solver like Groovy. If M is invisible, the J bit has zero sum property. The division property description to a stream cipher is quite, quite straightforward. The R round initialization is the same with that of block cipher. It only differs that there is an additional output bit. So the final vector is KRKZ and is dedicatedly assigned to 0, 1. The corresponding MILP model M is constructed and solved accordingly. If M is invisible, we know the super poly PI is constant 0. After introduced to the realm of Cuba text, the division property has further developed. New techniques such as flag technique and degree evaluation are proposed. The former improves the accuracy of the different property by imposing each bit with a flag value to control the model construction process. The latter replaces the traditional constraints kx equals to zero with an objective function maximizing the Hamming weight of kx, so as to upper bound the algebraic degree of the superpoly. Combining the two technique is the division property based degree evaluation algorithm with flag technique. If the algorithm returns minus one, the super poly is constant zero. If it returns zero, the super poly can be either constant zero or constant one. For a positive integer d, the super poly is a polynomial of degree no higher than d. The Grin 128 states consists of uh, LFSR and uh, NFSR. We find that the NFSR bit generated at the 31st initialization round, denoted as P158, is a crucial bit. It can be nullified by setting the V30 or V90 bit to the corresponding dynamic value. Dynamic value is based on the analysis of the B158 ANF. Such a crucial intermediate state bit can be nullified if V90 or V30 is set to its dynamic value F90 or F30 respectively. F90 and F30 contain three bits of key-related information, namely GO, X42, and X125. In order to correctly assign the dynamic IV, the three bits should be correctly guessed. For a wrong guess, the B158 will not be nullified but become one of the seven values including constant 1. Such values correspond to the wrong guesses can be easily deduced with the ANF of B158. Among the seven wrong key guesses, the wrong guess w equals to 1 will make the crucial intermediate state bit have the lowest algebraic degree.
So we take W equals to 1 as the representation of wrong key guesses. The MLRP model construction for our dynamic cube attack is as follows. The starting point is also the initial vector corresponding to key and IV bits. Before modeling the updating function calls, the dynamic IV should be assigned to its dynamic value corresponding to the A and F. This will affect the division property by imposing constraints to the model M. So the division property vector is now KO sub. Then, the updating function is called as original grand 128 process, except for at round 31, where the intermediate state bit V155 and 58 is generated. For the correct key guess, the flag is assigned to 0, while for the wrong guess, it's 1. The constraints in model M are both B158 equals to 0, so the guess W can only affect the model construction process afterwards. Apparently, the model M's for correct and incorrect key guesses are different. For cube I, the degree evaluation method can be called based on such model M so as to upper bound the degree of the superpoly. Such degree evaluation algorithm takes as input not only I and IV, but the key guess W as well. Based on such a degree evaluation technique, we design the preliminary criteria for a qualified cube that are likely to, to satisfy both proof 1 and proof 2 of our dynamic cube attack. For proof 1, we restrict that DO equals to minus 1, indicating that for the correct key guess, the summation over the cube is constantly 0. So there is detectable zero sum property as non randomness symbol. We restrict d1 to, a, to an integer much larger than 0, so the superpoly corresponding to the wrong key guess is likely to be a complicated polynomial with high algebraic degree. According to such criteria, we randomly construct cube i's and collect some qualified cube candidates. They are of dimension 90 and their d1s are no less smaller than 39. Each cube, we need to construct the weak key classes for the wrong key guesses. We first introduce a weak key class defined by a subset of key indices called split set, denoted as lambda, as long as a key x satisfies that the entries of their position at lambda are all zero, the corresponding superpoly value is constant zero. The split set can be easily checked with modified division property based degree evaluation technique. Before the model construction, the flag values corresponding to the split set entries are all set to zero. With such flag values, additional constraints should be imposed accordingly. With such a model M, the degree evaluation should always return minus one, indicating that the superpoly is constant zero corresponding to such. We are able to acquire the minimal split set lambda based on our proof 2 assumption, bias of the wrong key guesses can be evaluated. As can be seen, the smaller the minimal split set is, the less significant the bias can be. Accordingly, with significant bias for wrong guesses, the success probability of our dynamic cube attack can be higher. The success probability can be computed easily as well. We construct the minimum split set lambda in a heuristic manner. We start from an empty set lambda 0, then we traverse the remaining indices and expand the split set by picking the one bringing the largest degree drop. The iteration ends until the evaluation evaluated degree drops to minus 1. With this method, we are able to construct the minimum split set for the 29 cubes used in our dynamic cube attack. To make sure we get the higher success probability, we must make sure that the minimum split set of the cubes are not too small. So the criteria of qualified cubes is changed. We restrict that the minimum split sets are of size larger than two. Fortunately, all 29 cubes have minimum sets 
containing at least two elements, so the overall success probability of our attack is evaluated as 99.83%. The concept of split set can also be used in other situations. As we have demonstrated, the smaller the minimum split set is, the more significant the bias phenomenon can be. For an R round stream cipher, if the degree evaluation algorithm returns a positive integer even for the largest possible cube i and the largest possible split set lambda, we regard such round number R as the secure bound for the cipher against the bias-based cube tester. Apparently, the largest possible cube is the one containing all IV bits, and the largest possible split sets are those only missing one element of all key indices. Using this method, we are able to give the bounds for green light stream, stream ciphers. As can be seen, the bounds for bias is usually larger than those of zero-sum. Especially for Green 128, the bias bound is even larger than the originally designed initialization round number. Therefore, our method is an efficient tool for newly designed stream ciphers to determine their number of initialization rounds. In ordinary key recovery attack for super poly related key index J, we consider the split set lambda J and call the modified degree evaluation algorithm we can evaluate its degree dj. If dj is larger than zero, we know that the corresponding key cannot appear in the linear part of the superpoly, so the coefficient of xj is zero. Therefore, we do not need to compute such a coefficient through a cube summation, which diminish the complexity by two to the i. In this way, we are able to improve the current Best results on Crivium and Acorn by 1 and 13 rounds. To sum up, the contribution of this paper is that we have broadened the application of the division property technique. We link the division property with three cube attack variants, namely the dynamic cube attack, the bias cube tester, and the ordinary cube attack. More specifically, we propose a new dynamic cube attack on full green 128. In comparison with Dinner's original one, our attack has much better success probability. For the bias cube tester, we draw secure bounds for green light stream ciphers. This is a promising tool for determining the number of initialization rounds for newly designed primitives. Finally, we give improved cube attack results on Crivium and Acorn. In the future, there are still works to be done to better modeling the non-randomness used in cube attacks and cube testers. The existing attacks should also be improved. We will also introduce the three-subset division property to the realm of dynamic cube attack.